place at first just go sleep Turn the water Shade off I stood in the middle of the recess yard, a paralyzed 10-year-old. Kids swarmed, dodging me as they played soccer. All I saw were blues of color. The sun stung my eyes, tears gathered in the corners. Usually, I went to recess with friends, but today, I was late and couldn't find anyone. Helplessness gnawed at my stomach. Friends might have been waving or running toward me. People might have been laughing at the weird girl. A teacher might have been trying to make eye contact. But I couldn't see any of that. The entire fourth grade surrounded me, but I was isolated. Powerlessness swallowed me whole. The next day, I gathered my courage and finally told a friend about my disability for the first time. I have albinism. Yes, I'm an albino. This rare genetic condition causes a chronic lack of pigment in eyes, skin, and hair. Albinism also causes a severe sensitivity to light and a visual impairment that cannot be corrected. These problems cover a spectrum of severity. In my case, it's mild. To see what a normally sighted person can from 80 feet away, I need to be 20 feet away. About half a dozen people joked that it's lucky I can't see your faces tonight. <laughs> but I also can't see my parents right now, and I don't feel lucky for that. In the four years since being that scared 10-year-old, I've learned how to better advocate for myself. But every time I do, it still feels like jumping off a cliff. If no one is there to catch me, I fall. It's painful. I don't know what to do with a visually impaired kid, was the first thing that a past teacher said to me. I never got any paperwork. What do you want me to do here? I wanted to say that I'm sorry my disability is inconvenient. <laughs> I just live with it. I can't imagine what it's like to have to deal with me for an hour every other day. <laughs> Instead, I went to my counselor. The paperwork had been sent. Despite that, next class was a partner project centered on diagrams too small for me to see. Um, do you want to try this? Asked my partner, holding out the work she had been completing alone for the past hour. It was the fourth time she'd asked. I'm sorry, I can't, I said for the fourth time. I've honed the skill of bottling emotions. I cry biannually in a controlled environment with my mom and lots of chocolate. <laughs> this usually follows a text sent to my mom saying, it's time. <laughs> Geography homework, death, drowning polar bears all addressed in less than two hours with several boxes of Kleenex. Even so, I could have cried that day in class. I wasn't the problem, but I felt like one. For the fifth time, my partner asked if I wanted to try the work. I'm sorry, I mumbled. Speaking up for my needs sometimes leaves me exhausted. Don't you have glasses? I get that a lot from teachers. So much that I created a t-shirt that includes the phrase, Emma Vrabel is not responsible for events that transpire after being asked if she needs glasses. <laughs> Kids prefer self-designed visual tests. How many fingers am I holding up? Sometimes I respond with 11. <laughs> People even try to argue with me about my disability. A girl once asked, if you're really an albino, why don't you have red eyes? This is a common misconception. Very few people with albinism have red eyes, I explained. But, the girl said, I read online that all albinos have red or yellow eyes. What? Praise the internet, I'm not an albino after all. <laughs> it doesn't help that albinism is often inaccurately and disgustingly depicted in the media. Despite my visual impairment, I love to read. Even with frequent visual fatigue, headaches, and the need to hold a book closer than most, I bring one with me everywhere. Last Christmas, I unwrapped my dream gift, a Kindle. <laughs> I thought all the secret books of the universe were on that magical device. I've always thought books or movies featuring a realistic character with albinism. To my disappointment, I've only found albinos as villains, skulking around torturing people to death or freaking out everyone with their pasty complexion and red eyes. 
such as the albino monk in the Da Vinci Code. It's amazing, really. Despite all albinos being visually impaired, he was a sharpshooting assassin. <laughs> Despite these experiences, I typed albino into the Kindle search bar. Behold, a dystopian novel in which albinos, the visually impaired, outnumbered 20,000 to one, sun tormented, forced you, sighted, pigmented people into submission. I fumed. I stopped. Then I downloaded the book. I read it in one sitting, occasionally growling. Then I wrote a review on Amazon. It includes, the author of this seemed oblivious to the fact that albinism is not a mythical condition that affects only the characters in her story, but a condition that affects thousands throughout the world. How common are these misconceptions? Mine is the only bad review. That made posting it all the more painful and necessary. Books like this set me and others with albinism up for failure. How can people support what they don't understand? At the beginning of ninth grade, I stayed after biology one day to tell the, my teacher that the print on a worksheet was too small for me to read. Usually, I walk Jane to an art class, since we share both classes. She waited for me. Why did you have to stay late? Jane asked after we began to walk. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Here we go, another jump. I briefly explained albinism and waited for the usual reaction. The person tries, but fails, to keep a neutral expression. Then an awkward silence followed by, the weather's weird today. <laughs> but Jane reacted differently. I guess I've never dealt with something like that, she said. Jane was still asking questions by the time we got to art class. I spent the entire hour-long period answering her thoughtful inquiries. Will you be able to drive? Probably not, maybe with a restricted license. How do your eyes work exactly? Not well. <laughs> How did you get albinism? Albinism is transferred through recessive genes. Jane provided me an opportunity for me to speak about my albinism. It was empowering. A few days after I spoke with Jane, I stood in the middle of the cafeteria. Having recently moved to Texas, I knew only two people in my lunch period. The cafeteria was massive. Bodies blurred into swaths of color as I looked for someone I recognized. I had to lean over a table and survey everyone sitting there. It's hard to break the misconception about people with albinism being creepy if I spend my lunch periods acting creepy. <laughs> Helplessness clung to me like wet clothing. This ritual of trying and failing to find a familiar face had been my reality for weeks. I was exhausted. Emma? Emma. I recognized Jane's voice. She was moving toward me. Hey, do you want to sit with us? She asked. I nodded and followed her, and we joined her friend. We snarked the way only teenage girls can snark about homework, homecoming, and our differing tastes in TV shows. I did not feel helpless. This time, my albinism did not isolate me. It was the reason I was a part of this. Sometimes, I have to jump off a cliff to find out what it feels like when someone is there to catch me. And when that happens, it feels incredible. 